Okay, guys, so I'm not going to be here on Thursday, which is why I'm making this video. I taught you a little bit about this yesterday. Um, who knows? Maybe Thursday we're not even going to have school. I don't know with the snow and everything. But either way, I'm talking about solving and graphing compound inequalities. All right, and what I mean by compound, here we go real quick. Let me just put this up here. Compound Okay, so what I mean by compound inequalities is an inequality that has a limitation on both ends, okay? So for example, if I say x is less than 3, that's just a typical inequality, and it has a limitation of 3. It's saying that x is anything smaller than 3, okay? If I put less than or equal to, I would be saying x can equal 3 or is smaller than 3 still only one limitation. A compound inequality would have something like this. Um, x is greater than maybe negative uh, 2 or x is less than or equal to 3. So notice there are two limitations now. Now not only if we look at a graph, not only is x smaller than 3, Okay? but it has to be bigger than negative 2. Open dot. Remember, it's not equal to. So it has to be bigger than negative 2. So now we have a compound inequality where we have limitations on, on two parts of it. Okay? And sometimes they're not always facing each other, but here's something I want to bring up. Notice how you have one line here on the graph. If you have one line, that means your inequality, your compound inequality with two limitations can actually be expressed just using one inequality. So let me show you what I mean. I'll write it in green just above. So if x is greater than negative 2, I can write it like this, negative 2. Oh, wow. That's so strange. It's actually like liquid, but it's not writing. All right, we'll use blue. If x is negative 2, so if uh, x is greater than negative 2, sorry, I'm just trying to get my mind straight again. That was really weird looking. Okay, this is the same thing. So look at this inequality. I just flipped it around. It's, this says x is greater than negative 2. This one is still saying x is bigger than negative 2, all right? So here's an example of x is bigger than negative 2. And then I'm going to take this same inequality and just place it right on top, the x matching up. So x is bigger than negative 2, but it's less than or equal to 3. So notice I just took both inequalities and placed them together as one big inequality. And that's what I'm saying. So when you see your graph written as one inequality, just one line with two limitations, you can write it as one big inequality, saying that x is between negative 2 and 3. X is between negative 2 and 3. All right, so that's one example that I wanted to go over. Uh, then the other way is, say I said that maybe I'm going to switch these signs. And here's an example of one that you can't write as one big compound inequality. But say I said that X is less than negative 2 and X is greater than or equal to 3. So then what your graph would look like is... If x is less than negative 2, it's going this way, and x is greater than or equal to positive 3, it's going that way. So now you actually have two separate inequalities, so these are never going to be written together. Um, and they might actually say the word and in here. So x is less than that, no, nah, probably or, sorry, because it makes more sense for or. x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 3, but it's not in between, okay? And there's no way to really join these two things together, all right? So you'd have to actually keep them as two separate inequalities. All right, so I'm going on to a few examples real quick. But anyway, difference between a compound inequality and a regular inequality. A regular inequality has um, just one limitation. Compound inequality have multiple, but in most cases, just two limitations, all right? Um, so here we go. I'm going to work some examples. I'm going to graph x is greater than 0, 
or x is less than 3. Okay, so number line, here's 0, here's 3. So x is less than 3 would be this way, but hold on, x is greater than 0 is that way. So x is greater than 0, less than 3, so it's somewhere in between there. That's how you'd graph it. Now notice, uh, open dots because it's not equal to, but notice it's one inequality. That means I could actually take these two things and join them together. So for example, this one I'm going to flip it around and say that x is greater than 0, and I'm going to say it this way. x is still greater than 0, and now x is also less than 3. So notice I just put the x in between 0 and 3 because that's what's happening. x exists between 0 and 3. Okay. Um, so there's one example. A second example I wanted to do was graph negative 4 less than or equal to p, which is less than or equal to 4. So again, negative 4, 4. p is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay, so greater than negative 4 is this way. Then less than positive 4 is back this way. So it's somewhere in between these two points. It's between negative 4 and positive 4. And by the way, on the worksheet that's on this, uh, on this link on Schoology, I'm just going through the evens right now. So I've already done one. This is, the, this is number, I'm guessing this is number four. Here's probably going to be number six right here. So I'm going to write the inequality for this graph. So it's, now they're going to give us a graph. At two, it has an open dot, and it's going to the left. At three, it has a closed dot, and it's going to the right. So if I'm going to write the inequality, then it's going to look like this. X is less than, it's smaller than two. So notice the mouth is opening and eating foot's bigger. So X is smaller than two. It's, a, it's strictly smaller than. It doesn't have the equal sign below because it's an open dot. Or X is greater than or equal to. So notice now that the equal to is there because of the closed dot on the three. Okay, but it's bigger, so we're to pointing to all the numbers that are bigger than 3. So here's my written inequality. It's in two pieces on the graph, so I'm not going to write it in one piece. I can't. I'm going to write it as two separate pieces, two separate inequalities. All right? Um, next example. I'm going to write, so I think this is number 8, I think, but I'm not sure. What I do know is it's on there. Between negative 5 and zero open dots. Okay. So, um, if that's the case, then x is greater than negative 5. x is greater than negative 5. So here's negative 5, here's greater than. It's greater than negative 5, but it's less than zero. But x is less than zero. Now, here's what I want to show you. X is less than zero, X is greater than negative five. Look how these X's potentially can overlap and you can just make one big inequality. X is less than or greater than negative five, but less than zero. Notice how you can actually put them together. You don't have to, it's not wrong to keep them separate, but you can put them together and a lot of times you see them put together, so you need to understand that, okay? So when it's written as one inequality, you can write it as one I'm sorry, when it's graphed as one inequality, you can write it as one big inequality, okay? All right, moving on. Um, last example. I think it probably wanted us to solve and graph this compound inequality, so it, gave them, it gives them to you as two separate, and I think this is number 10, but again, I'm not positive. There's that. And... 3c plus 1 is less than 13. Okay, so now we're just solving two separate inequalities. So uh, let me go ahead and write in black. All right, so to solve, again, you're doing the order of operations, but in reverse. Okay, so I need to, there's, so order of operations. I'm starting off, when you're solving, you want to do it in reverse. You're starting off with whatever is being added or subtracted 
to the side that has your variable on it. So here's the side with my variable on it. I want to get rid of whatever's added or subtracted first. So there's a minus 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So these cancel. 2c is what drops down. It's still greater than uh, negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Okay. So now I'm to division and multiplication. So here's 2 times c. So I'm going to divide by 2. So c is greater than negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Notice my signs did not change direction because I never multiplied or divided by a negative. Um, now I'm going to do the other one. So again, starting off with whatever is added or subtracted. So those cancel. 3c is what comes down. It's less than 13 minus 1 is 12. Now I'm going to divide by 3. So c is less than 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay. So now that I've solved, I'm going to go ahead and graph, and this is going to be the end of the video. I do want to bring up one more thing, though. Remember, if you ever end up dividing or multiplying by a negative number, the direction of your sign, so for example, if this was like a negative 2, if that was a negative 2 and we divided by a negative 2, um, then the sign that was facing this way needs to turn and face that way. All right? If you divide or multiply by a negative number ever, okay, um, change the direction of your sign. All right, so here we go. Graphing it, negative 1, 4, C is greater than negative 1, and C is less than 4. C is less than 4, but greater than negative 1. Notice it's written as 1 inequality, which means those things, right, or it's graphed as 1 inequality, these can be written as 1 inequality. It would look like this. Negative 1 is less than C, which is less than 4. And there's my one big inequality if I needed to write it. Okay? Um, all right, guys, that's all I have for the video. Make sure you get this assignment finished. Uh, I've given you all the evens. They're already done on the worksheet, so finish the odds and turn those in on Friday, and I'll see you later.